Hello and welcome. Today we are going to make a drag and drop file input, a lot like you see on this very popular uh, web developer tool, tinyjpg.com. I believe you can also pull this site up if you search or enter in tinypng.com. It will compress, I guess, files that are PNG or JPEG, either one. So for example, if we grab a file like this flower, and drag it over. Notice the border, the dashed border here they have turns green and we can just drop it on this input and then it compresses the file. So we're just going to work on the part where you can drag the file over the, an area that you define and then you can work with those files. And then you can do whatever you want with them. Maybe you're just going to upload them somewhere or store them or, or whatever you're going to do. It's not necessarily an image compression tutorial today. It's just about dragging the file into an input or dragging more than one file if you want to. So let's get started with that. I'm going to start today by minimizing our folder with the images. And you can see on the left, I've got Visual Studio Code open. I've got an empty folder open for the project. On the right, we've got Chrome, and you can see I've got tinyjpg.com open. However, I'm going to go to cdnjs.com, and I want to grab Font Awesome very quickly because I'm going to use an icon. So I'm just going to copy the link tag after I type in Font. Font Awesome is the first thing that comes up. So now that we're finished with that, and we've got Visual Studio Code open, let me just expand Visual Studio Code for now, and we'll start by creating our index.html. Inside the index.html, we can type exclamation mark. We get an Emmet abbreviation. If I click that, I get a skeleton for the page. And we'll just call this uh, file input drag and drop. Okay, now that we're finished with that, we can put in our link to Font Awesome. I'll just paste that in. I'm going to press Alt-Z in Visual Studio Code to wrap lines of code so we see it all in the window. And there you can see that line wraps. So line eight is a little deeper now. But we've got Font Awesome. Let's go ahead and make a link with a style sheet attribute. And here we're going to link to CSS that we haven't created yet, but it's a CSS folder and it will be main.css. And let's save that much, come over to our file tree, create that CSS folder. Inside the folder, let's go ahead and create our main.css. We'll leave that empty for now. And there's not much to put in the body, but we will start out with a main element. And inside this element, I'm just going to paste what we have. It's very simple. It's a section element. I give it the class of drop area. And now you can see I am pulling in an images icon from Font Awesome. Now we've got text, just like the uh, tiny JPG site does, where we say drop your PNG or JPG files here. But you could do this with any type of file, PDFs, whatever. I'm, I'm not making a tutorial just for image compression, but just so we have some extra text in this area so we can see how that uh, reacts to the different events that we're going to call with event listeners. So here we go. We've got some lines of text and an image inside this section that's the drop area. And really, that's all we need in the HTML. So let's save that and move on. In the CSS file, we'll select that. I'm going to paste in just about 50 lines of CSS. I want to focus on the JavaScript today, but I will, of course, have this in the code repository that is linked to in the description so you can download this. I'll take a quick look at it. You see I'm just defining with, we'll start out with the CSS reset. We've got some basic styles on the HTML and body elements. Then we move to the main element, a header element, and then we have our drop area class. But nothing that impacts the functionality other than what we will work with in JavaScript, and that is this green border class. And so note that we have green dash border that turns the border color green, and we will work with that in the JavaScript. So let's go ahead and save our CSS. And remember, you can download this from my repository linked to in the description. And let's go over to the file tree now and work on that functionality of JavaScript. So we'll start with a JS folder, and inside the JS folder, we'll create main.js, an empty file for now. And then back in the header, or the head section right here, on starting on line three, and below the CSS, let's go ahead and create our script tag with the source attribute, 
that links to, you can see Visual Studio Code brings up the available folders already, JS, and then the main JS file. We also want to put defer here, so we make sure that the DOM has loaded and that we can work with the elements in the DOM before the JavaScript is called. We'll save that much and move on to the JavaScript. Let's go ahead and fire this up with the live server extension. You can see a right click and pick open with live server. But if you're not familiar with the live server extension over here on the extensions button in Visual Studio Code, search for live server. And you can see Live Server by Ritwick Day. And if you don't have this, go ahead and install it because it helps you run a local dev server. You can see I would have to click uninstall right now because I already have it installed. And now I'll click the file tree again. Again, this was the Visual Studio Code extensions button over here where you can get Live Server. But now we're back in the file tree and I can right click and choose Open with Live Server. And here is what we have. So that CSS I applied gave us something very similar to the tiny JPG input area here. You can see I'm using an image icon, similar text, similar dashed border, and we'll turn this border green when we drag our files over it as well. Just kind of like what we see here as this border turned green when I drug a file over it earlier. So back to the code, I'll make it so we can see both. Just want to drag this down. And of course that scrunches this a little bit in the JS, it's not so bad. But now that we're working in the JS, I can press Control B and hide that file tree to have just a little more room to work. And I want to start by defining an init app function, as I often do in vanilla JavaScript. And now we'll put more in this init app function than I do in some apps, but we'll start out also by listening and knowing when to call this init app function. So here we, underneath it, we'll call document dot add event listener, and we'll listen for the DOM content loaded event, and after that we just call init app. So now, when the DOM content is loaded then this init app function will be called. And inside the init app function, we want to start out by selecting our drop area. Now remember it had a class uh, called drop area, so we'll just call our variable the same thing, and we'll use document.querySelector. And inside the selector, we'll search for the drop area. And now we've got our drop area. Now let's define a few functions, just short arrow functions here that we're going to use. So we'll have a const active function, and this is a one-liner, so we can call drop area, and then we say class list dot add, and we'll add our green dash border. Looks like I need to press Alt Z to wrap the lines in this file as well, just so we can see everything. There we go. Now, the next one we'll say const inactive, and you can probably guess we're going to do something very similar here. Drop area dot class list dot remove, and now we'll remove that green border, if we call the inactive function. And let's go ahead and define one other short arrow function. We'll call it prevents with an S. Here we need the event, and we'll just call that E. Sometimes you see that abbreviated as EVT, or you might see the full word event in there. It all means the same thing. It's the event. So we'll just use E, and then we'll call prevent default. You may have seen me do that previously for a form that would reload the entire page if that happens. We're not so much worried about that. We're working with some different events, and I will show you what those events are. When we're dragging and dropping in JavaScript, there are four events to consider. I'm going to put those all in an array here. There's the drag enter, and that's when we would enter our defined area with when we're dragging our file. There is the drag over, and that checks every few milliseconds to see if we're if we have are dragging a file over the area and if we're moving it around. And then there's the drag leave, which is the opposite of the drag enter. And then there is, of course, the drop, if we drop the file in that area. So now you can see I've created an array with all four of these events to listen for. So now I can call for each. 
And now I'll say event, just EVT abbreviation, name. So for each event name, we're going to call this function. And inside this function, we'll say drop area dot add event listener. And here's the EVT name, because we said for each EVT name, we'll call prevents. Now, this is kind of an efficient way to add this prevent default to all four of these events. And that definitely beats creating a function for each one and, and adding that in. So it's just a more efficient way to do it. I kind of don't like how this is wrapping, making it a little harder to see, so I'm going to expand this right now. And here, this is a lot easier to see. So we have these one-liner functions, and now I'm calling this one-liner prevents inside the for each here for each of these events. After that, we need to call a couple of other things. So let's create another array just for the drag enter and the drag over. And we'll say for each once again. And once again, for each event name, let's go ahead and use camel case there. Now for each event name, we'll say drop area. And by the way, this is actually, the drop area is where the uh, prevent default was added, but it's for each of those event names we are preventing the default. Here, the drop area dot add event listener once again, event name, and now we'll call active. So when we drag enter, when we're dragging a file into the area and we're dragging over, so once again, when we stay in that area, and that's the one that checks every few milliseconds, uh, we will turn the border green. Likewise, as you might guess, we need to create one for drag leave and for the drop event. So we'll once again call for each, once again for each event name and camel case. And inside here, we'll listen to the drop area. And now we'll say event name once again, and we're going to call inactive. So that will remove the green border if we drop the file or if we leave the area while we're dragging the file. If we save all of that, we should be able to go and check that functionality out. So I'll make this so we can see both again. And this wraps a little weird when it's long, but we can see all of our code. So now let me pull up an image file and drag it over. And yes, we've got a green border. Gray border, green border, the whole time I'm over this area. Now, why did we use all of those events? Why didn't we just listen for drag in, or like drag enter, and leave drag over out of it? Well, that's because of these other elements in here. So if that were to happen, it would turn green when we drag it across the line. But then when we would drag it over this paragraph or this icon or this other paragraph element here, then the border would turn gray again. And we wanted to make sure that it worked no matter where we drag it in here. And it does right now. And that's because we used both of those events, drag enter and drag over. So what do you do with files once you drag them over? I need to show you at least how to grab the files and then it will be up to you what you do with them. So let's scroll down here and add one more line inside this uh, init app function. And here we'll grab the drop area once again, and then add an event listener. And we will call, based on the drop event, we'll call a function. Let's just call it handle drop. Now we need to define handle drop, but our init app function is already pretty good size here. So I'm going to define it down below after this DOM content loaded event is listened for and we call the init app here. Now, if you wonder why I can call an arrow function underneath instead of above this, you need to watch my tutorial on hoisting in JavaScript. And I'll provide a link to that now up at the top. So let's define this const handle drop and here we'll have the event coming in. We'll once again call the event E. 
Now, let's define this data transfer. We'll just call it DT. And here's the event, and we'll listen for data, or we'll get data transfer from the event. Sorry, not a listener. And then after that, let's define our files. And our files will be equal to data transfer dot files. Now we've got our files, but the files at this point, they're not an array, they are a file list. So let's go ahead, create a log here, and let's log files and see what we get in the console. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'll expand the browser, and then I'm going to open up DevTools so we can see the console over here on the right. Now I'll need to bring our folder back up. And let's go ahead and drag and drop one of these. I'll grab this other image, I'll drop it, and we've got a file list. This is what we logged to the console. And if we expand this, and then we have a zero here, here's our first file, we get all of these different properties. So you have a JPEG image, you can see the size of the image, here's the name of the file, and that's what it is though, it's a file list. It is not an array at this point, but you could easily make that an array. So let's go back to the code. Here we are. Well, that looks a little confusing. I'll go ahead and close DevTools. Come back, there we go. And, well, that's even better. Okay, so if we have this file list right here, all we would really need to do to have an array instead of a file list would be to break it out into an array. So let's just say array and destructure that or actually expand that with our three dots into an array from the file list just like that. And so now we could define that in any way we want. So we could call this um, array, or let's call it file array, there we go. Need a little more coffee this morning. And it equals the files in our file list. Now, let's go ahead and create a second log, let's say file array, save that. And now let's come back and do the same thing, opening up DevTools, grabbing a file, so we've got our file list, just like we did before, and now our array with a file in it. And there's our flower. So let's try it with, I'll clear this out so there's no confusion. Let's try it with both files at the same time. Now we've got a file list with a length of two. One file, two files. Now we've got an array, one file, two files and everything in there that we expect. Okay, from there, it's kind of up to you what you want to do with the files. We'll close that out. But now you know how to drag and drop files over a certain area. Of course, have it show, like we turned the border green as well, so show that it's working. And once you drop the files, you get them first as a file list, which we logged right here, but I've also shown you how to turn those into an array right there. So I hope this tutorial helped you today and now you know how to drag files into an input. And I stumbled over the terminology earlier, but these three dots here, the ellipses, as you create an array are called the spread syntax. And you are taking those files in the file list and spreading them out each individual value into a file array here with the spread syntax. So I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching, liking the video, and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.